I believe that the holy writ exists in order to persuade men of the truths necessary for salvation. But it's, it is not necessary that the same God that gave us our speech and our senses, our intellects, would have us put aside those things. Particularly in the case of, 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 of science, where it is, it's not the smallest mention in the Holy Bible. I mean, if the sacred scribes meant to teach men astronomy, then why did they leave it out? Galileo's outspoken letter to Madama Christina, intended to resolve the discrepancies between science and the Bible, came to be seen as an assault on the Bible itself. And that letter gets circulated, and local priests read it, and they're outraged, and they're sending copies to Rome, and they're saying to people at the Inquisition, you should investigate Galileo, you should do something about this, this guy's a heretic. Galileo surely knew what could happen to heretics when the cardinals of the Inquisition organized to purify society by combating heresy. Much of their work was the banning of books, but the Inquisition also had the powers of both torture and execution. Rome's dungeons had seen the end of many heretics, including the infamous Giordano Bruno, fallen priest and occult dabbler in science. To the Inquisition, extreme measures were justified. Whatever pain was inflicted to save the soul of a heretic was nothing compared to the pain of eternal damnation. One of the things that the papacy wants to show to a united Europe, Catholics above all, is that there's no tolerance for dissent, that dissent will be rooted out and punished. A Scottish heretic is burned at the stake with a pitch shirt so that he'll burn all the more brightly. And Bruno, who's burned alive, which is quite unusual, most people are burned when corpses, is one of a whole series of people who are put to death as a way of showing that orthodoxy will be enforced. Giordano Bruno was a priest and a New Age charlatan who denied the divinity of Christ. But like Galileo, he had described a vision of the universe which had the Earth spinning around the sun. There's been a lot of different views as to how much the Bruno parallel uh, weighed on Galileo. Undoubtedly, it must have had some influence. He realized, of course, what had happened to Bruno. I think, I doubt if he thought himself to be in danger of that. But at the, at the same time, there was that looming uh, thing in the background that if he defied the Inquisition here, he could suffer very severe penalties. Behind Bruno's execution was Rome's greatest inquisitor, the hammer of heretics, Roberto Cardinal Bellarmine. Now, years later, this same Cardinal Bellarmine was receiving reports about Galileo. Church theologians have been alert to the possible implications of what Galileo is doing. And there is slowly somewhat of a Galileo file building in Rome, in in, in the Inquisition. And as these noises coming from the lower tier of the clergy in Florence become louder and louder and louder in Rome, Galileo goes to Rome to try to argue his case. I decided to stand openly alone on the theater of the world to bear witness to the sober truth. I believe that 
Good philosophers like eagles fly alone, not in flocks like starlings. <laughs> I wanted people to understand that nature not only gave them eyes to see her works, but brains to make them capable of understanding them. Galileo journeyed to Rome in the winter of 1616. As a member of the Medici court, he became a guest of the Tuscan ambassador at the palatial Villa Medici. Perched on a hill overlooking the city, from his balcony, Galileo could see the domes of the Vatican as he eagerly awaited his meeting with the inquisitor, Cardinal Bellarmine. Galileo tended to overestimate his own powers of persuasion. He thought that if he could go down to Rome and talk to some of the hierarchy, he could easily persuade them to remain open on the question of was the earth moving or was the earth fixed? Theologians listened as Galileo confidently made the case for Copernicus. Galileo is fully committed to the Copernican theory, and we mustn't see the church there as a, a, a monolith. I mean, he goes to see bishops and cardinals and theologians, and he argues his case, uh, of course, very passionately. However, the Medici ambassador to the Vatican is writing home, listen, Galileo needs to be calm, to shut up, not go around, you know, arguing his case so much. In his letter, the ambassador worried that the Medici family might be drawn into an ugly controversy. Galileo is passionately involved in this fight of his, and he may well get himself in serious trouble, along with anyone who supports his views. This business is not a joke, and the man is staying here under our protection. He thought he could convince the more open-minded theologians in Rome of the merits of the Copernican doctrine. He thought also that he con could convince them that the matter of astronomy was not a matter for theologians in the first place. And so even though he must have acutely known the powers and the dangers of opposing the Inquisition, he evidently thought his own powers of persuasion were such that he could bring them around to his view. But as he began talking up the Copernican system, uh, he also raised alarm signals, and the conservatives uh, in the Catholic Church decided that something had to be done. Galileo actually welcomed the chance to make his case to Cardinal Bellarmine. He had heard that Bellarmine had an interest in astronomy and was fascinated by the telescope. Bellarmine himself, who began interested in science, as he progressed in science, realized that there were a number of aspects to scientific discovery that threatened orthodoxy as he saw it, and realized that science might interfere with his theology, and decided at that point to shut down his scientific investigations. And he made a personal choice to opt for piety rather than scientific curiosity which never, I think, is a completely satisfactory solution. And it may explain some of his virulence in going after what he perceives as scientific heresy. The pious Cardinal Bellarmine had countenanced burning men alive, but he was ethereal and unworldly. Even the ruling families of Italy considered the Cardinal a bit too saintly. For Galileo, counting on the influence of his Medici patrons, the Cardinal's incorruptible piety was not good news. But Galileo never even had a chance to persuade Bellarmine. Three days before his planned meeting with the Cardinal, the Holy Office of the Inquisition met at the Collegio Romano to vote on the theories of Copernicus.